Hi, John here. In this video, we're going to look at fusible plugs. By the end of the video, you'll know the different parts of the fusible plug. You'll know how fusible plugs work. We'll look at some typical applications of fusible plugs, and we'll even take a look at fusible plug maintenance. Fusible plugs are a type of warning device. They're employed on compressed air systems, wellheads, and steam systems, to name a few applications. They are considered the last line of defence and are often used to avert a catastrophic failure occurring, for example an explosion. Whilst safety valves protect machinery and systems from overpressure, fusible plugs protect machinery items and systems from over temperature. Fusible plugs have found widespread application in many industries because they have a very simple design, they are very effective and they are also cheap. Fusible plugs essentially consist of two parts, a body and a fusible alloy channel running through the middle of the body. It's from the fusible alloy channel that the fusible plug gets its name. The plug body is usually manufactured from brass, bronze or gunmetal. The top of the body is called the head and below the head is the threaded section. The material chosen for the fusible alloy has a predetermined melting point, and this melting point is lower than the plug body's melting point. A common fusible alloy material is tin, which has a melting point of around 232 degrees Celsius or 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we know that the fusible plug consists essentially of two parts, the plug body and the fusible alloy channel. Let's have a look at how fusible plugs work. The fusible alloy within a fusible plug is designed to melt at a lower temperature than the surrounding plug body. If the plug is exposed to elevated temperatures, the fusible alloy will melt and a straight or tapered channel will be formed lengthwise through the plug body. The now open channel allows the system pressure to vent directly to a predetermined location. For compressed air systems, this location is usually the space surrounding the plug although we can also connect a pipe to the fusible plug, and in this way we can vent to a remote location. For boilers, it's more likely to be the firebox, or furnace. The fusible plug body is often shaped so that a whistling noise is created as the system pressure vents. This acts as a local audible alarm to system operators. The operators can then take corrective action. So we know how fusible plugs work, but what's the purpose of a fusible plug? Well let's look at two different examples, one for compressed air systems and one for steam systems. Compressed air installations represent a considerable risk if exposed to fire. This is because the air within the system becomes heated and the system pressure rises until the pressure is too great for the system to hold. The stored energy within the system is also quite large. If this situation is allowed to continue, the system pressure could be released catastrophically. This catastrophic failure is likely to damage the immediate area surrounding the compressed air system, as well as potentially leading to loss of life. Other dangers associated with high temperatures in compressed air systems include ignition of oil vapour within air compressors, and ignition of any oil carryover that may be within the compressed air system piping. If we look at steam systems, fusible plugs are installed within boilers to reduce the risk of a boiler explosion as a result of low water firing. A low water level scenario in a boiler would lead to overheating of the heat transfer surfaces, and resultant damage to the boiler would occur. Low water firing of boilers has led to catastrophic failure in the past, and continues to be a primary safety concern for boiler operators today. Boiler fusible plugs are classified as steam actuated or fire actuated and can be installed on both fire tube boilers and water tube boilers. It's also possible to classify boiler fusible plugs as being either fireside or waterside plugs. Fireside plugs are screwed from the fireside to the waterside. Waterside plugs are screwed from the waterside to the fireside. If we're installing fusible plugs on a compressed air system, 
We can install them pretty much anywhere within the system, but they're usually installed directly after the air compressors or upon the compressed air storage vessels. There are many different types of industrial boiler, but on the example shown here, we could install a fusible plug one to two inches above the highest row of tubes. Should the water level in the boiler become too low, the side of the fusible plug that's exposed normally to water would then come into contact instead with steam. This would cause the fusible alloy to melt and steam would then travel from the steam space and into the furnace. Once this occurs, combustion within the furnace would no longer be possible and the flame would be extinguished. In this manner, it's possible to shut down the boiler before the top row of tubes are no longer covered by water and they begin to overheat. As with almost everything in the engineering world, fusible plugs require some form of maintenance. If we look at our compressed air system and steam system examples again, compressed air systems are normally maintained in a clean state. Some oil carryover may occur from the compressors, but this can be prevented by using oil-free compressors or filters. Moisture carryover may also occur, but nowadays most installations utilize dryers of the desiccant or refrigeration type, and these dryers remove any moisture from the system. Providing the oil and moisture are removed, the compressed air system will remain clean, and the fusible plug will remain in a good condition. That is to say it won't be coated in an oil film or corroded by water. Despite this, periodic changing of the plug is still required and should definitely be performed as part of any maintenance strategy. Not only that, but sometimes it's a legislative requirement to change the plug after a certain period of time, for example, after 12 months. Maintenance associated with fusible plugs for steam systems is slightly different. There are several factors that may influence a boiler fusible plug's operation. These relate to the plug being insulated and not functioning correctly as a result. Insulating of the fusible plug is a problem that may occur on the water side, fire side or both sides of the plug. On the water side, dissolved solids may solidify on heat transfer surfaces and form an insulating barrier. This insulating barrier is known as scale. Scale buildup on the fusible plug may cause the fusible plug not to operate as designed because heat transfer may be inhibited. If heat is not transferred to the plug, then the fusible alloy will not melt and the boiler will not be protected as designed. On the fire side, soot from combustion may accumulate on the fusible plug surface and form an insulating barrier. Because the soot forms an insulating barrier, heat transfer from the exhaust gas to the water side of the boiler is inhibited. For the same reason, heat transfer to the fusible plug is also inhibited. If this occurs, the fusible plug will not operate as intended. Whenever boilers are maintained, scale and soot is removed in order to restore the heat transfer surfaces back to their original condition, or as close to it as possible. A boiler's inspection frequency and the maintenance tasks that are performed are often dictated by governing bodies and legislative requirements. Because of this, even if a fusible plug appears to be in good condition, some governing bodies will insist that the plug is replaced after a certain period of time. There's actually good reason for this. Many materials degrade over time, and the properties of tin, which is the fusible alloy for many fusible plugs, will also degrade over time. For this reason, annual replacement of fusible plugs is often considered good practice even if it's not a legislative requirement. If you want to learn more about fusible plugs, steam systems, boilers, valves, pumps, heat exchangers, and many other topics related to engineering, then check out our main website. We have over 25 hours of video courses, covering topics relevant to many industrial engineering fields, such as power generation, chemical engineering, oil and gas, marine engineering, and even HVAC. If you like this video, please do like it or share it on social media. It really does help us out. And don't forget you can always subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks very much for your time.